what do you make of the communication mechanism that we humans use to share those ideas? Because like one essential element of all of this is not just that we're able to have these ideas, but we're also able to share them. We tend to, maybe you can correct me, but they, we seem to use language to share the ideas. Maybe we share them in some much deeper way than language, I don't know. But what, what do you make of this whole mechanism and how fundamental it is to the human condition? So some people will tell you that your language dictates your thoughts and your thoughts cannot form outside language. Mm -hmm. I tend to disagree. I see uh, thoughts as much more abstract as, you know, basically when I dream, I don't dream in words, I dream in shapes and forms and, you know, three-dimensional space with extreme detail. I was describing, so when I wake up in the middle of the night, I actually record my dreams. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I write them down in a Dropbox file. Uh, other times I'll just dictate them in, you know, audio. Mm -hmm. And um, my wife was giving me a massage the other day because like my left side was frozen and I started playing the recording. And as I was listening to it, I was like, I don't remember any of that. And I was like, oh, of course. And then the entire thing came back. Mm. But then there's no way any other person could have recreated that entire sort of, you know, three-dimensional uh, shape and dream and concept. And in the same way, when I'm thinking of ideas, there's so many ideas I can't put to words. I mean, I will describe them with a thousand words, but the, the idea itself is much more precise or much more sort of abstract or much more something, you know, different. It's either less abstract or more abstract. And it's either, you know, basically the, there's a, the projection that happens from the three-dimensional ideas into, let's say, a one-dimensional language. Um, and the language certainly gives you the apparatus to think about concepts that you didn't realize existed before. And with my team, we often create new words. I'm like, well, now we're gonna call these the regulatory plexus of a gene. And that gives us now the language to sort of build on that as one concept that you then build upon with all kinds of other, mm. other things. So there's this coevolution again of ideas and language, but they're not one-to-one -one, uh, with each other. Now let's talk about language itself, words, sentences. This is a very, distant construct from where language actually be begun. So if you look at how we communicate, as I'm speaking, my eyes are shining and my face is changing through all kinds of emotions and my entire body composition posture is reshaped. And my intonation, the pauses that I make, the softer and the louder and the this and the that are conveying so much more information. And if you look at early human language, and if you look at how, you know, the great apes communicate with each other, there's a lot of grunting, there's a lot of posturing, there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of sort of shrieking, et cetera. They have a lot of components of our human language, just not the words. So I think of human communication as combining the ape component but also, of course, the you know GPT-3 component. Mm. So basically there's the cognitive layer and the reasoning layer that we share with different parts of our relatives. There's the AI relatives, but there's also the grunting relatives. Mm -hmm. And what I love about humanity is that we have both. We're not just a conversational system. We're a grunting, emotionally charged, you know, weirdly interconnected system that also has the ability to reason. Mm -hmm. And when, when, we, when we communicate with each other, there's so much more than just language. There's so much more than just words. It does seem like we're able to somehow transfer even more than the, the body language. It seems that in the room with us is always a giant knowledge base of like shared experiences, mm -hmm. different perspectives on those experiences, but I don't know, the knowledge of who the last three, four presidents in the United States was and just all the, you know, 9-11, the tragedies in 9-11, all, mm -hmm. the, all the beautiful and uh, terrible things that happened in the world, they're somehow both in our minds and somehow enrich the ability to transfer information. That's what I love about it is I can, I can talk to you about 2001 Odyssey of Space and mention a very specific scene and that evokes all these feelings that yes. you've had when you first watched it. We're both visualizing that, maybe yeah. in different ways. Exactly. 
but in that, that yeah, <laughs> and, and not only that, but the feeling uh, is b- brought back up, just like you said with the dreams. We both have that feeling arise in some form exactly. as you bring up the exactly. how you know uh, facing his own mortality. Yeah, it's fascinating that we're able to do that. But I don't know. 